Okay, folks, so we're back, and let's have a look at one other uh, game with continuum of actions, so people can take a whole series of different actions, not just zero or one. <clears throat> and this is going to be one with uh, complements, strategic complements, and it's a linear quadratic model, and so it's got a very simple structure to the payoffs, which allows for a, a simple closed-form solution. So this comes out of a paper by um, Ballester, Calvar, Mangal, and Zanu in 2006. And the structure of the game, the, the payoffs are, are very simple and tractable. And so, in particular, when we think of a given individual taking their action xi, other actions are taking, uh, other people are taking actions x minus i, let's let xi be greater than or equal to zero, so I'm taking some real valued action. And the utility that people get, and we can see why it's called linear quadratic, so um, it's going to be increasing in my own action, just linearly. And um, quadratically, there's going to be a cost, so eventually I don't want to take too much action because uh, I'm going to pay for that in terms of xi squared. Um, but there's also the strategic complement aspect. So what I also do is I look at um, different friends and I weight them. So I have some weight i on, on j, and what I get is some product of our actions. So if other individuals are taking really high actions, then that gives me an incentive to take higher actions. I get a, a, a payoff, a bonus from taking higher actions when other people take high actions, okay? So the, the, the full model that they have allows also for some global substitutes and so forth, but let's focus in on this essential aspect of the model, which is the linear quadratic aspect, which is that I get a positive payoff from my direct action, I get um, some negative cost, and then, uh, which is quadratic, and then a bonus in terms of what other individuals are doing in, and I have strategic complements. Okay, so the nice thing about this is in this quadratic form, it's gonna be easy to figure out how, what's my best action given what other people are doing, and then to solve for a Nash equilibrium in this world is fairly easy. We'll be able to find a set of, of, of actions such that everybody is best responding to everybody else will be able to solve that as a function of the network in a really clean and simple form. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got this payoff, and we want to figure out what's the best xi in response to what other people are doing. So when I say x minus i, this is the vector of the actions for everybody else besides i. So if you maximize this function with respect to xi, just take the derivative of this and set it equal to zero, right? So if you want to maximize this function, What's the um, maximizing action? Uh, just set the derivative of this thing with respect to, so take dui dxi, set that equal to zero, and that gives you the maximizer here. Okay, and so we've got an, a nice function that's um, gonna be necessary and uh, sufficient in this case. Um, so when we go through and solve this, uh, when we uh, look at the first order conditions, taking the derivative, um, we get an a minus a b x i, right? So the two comes down, cancels the two, and then sum of w j w i j x j has to be equal to zero. So x i is just has a nice form where what you're doing is you're weighting things by a over b, and uh, um, you have uh, something which is positively responsive to the amount of activity that your neighbors take. So the more activity your neighbors take, the more you want to take. Okay, and so you're getting benefits that are proportional to A and benefits proportional to how much action your neighbors are taking and then you're paying a cost relative to B and so we get this benefits in the numerator um, over the cost and that uh, modulates exactly what the right XI is. Okay, so we've got a best response, what I should do in response to what everybody else is. And then an equilibrium is just going to be solving this set of equations simultaneously so everybody wants to be taking the, the action in response to, to everybody else. So to solve for all of these simultaneously, what we've got is if we write this down as a vector now, x1 through xn, it's a function of everybody else um, and uh, weights on what everyone else is doing. You can rewrite this as a vector x is equal to alpha times g of x, right? So we've got our x1 through xn, and that's equal to a vector, everybody's taking action a over b, a over b, 
plus a matrix times the actions where this matrix has entry um, in the ith, uh, ijth entry has wij over b, right? So you can rewrite this in this form. And what that says is now this is an easily solved equation, right? So we've got a linear equation in terms of x and the g, where the, the matrix um, that we're working with in terms of the network is now just these weights, these wij's, but divided through by b, which is the relative cost of the action, okay? So um, we've got a nice simple form here, and if we want to solve this then, um, you know, you could rewrite this. So rewriting this, in, you, we could substitute in, okay, x is equal to this. So substitute in this expression, put it in for x, and then do that repeatedly. What you're going to get is alpha plus g, g times alpha plus g times alpha plus g and so forth. And if you look at that, you can write that as a sum of g to the k, uh, where k is greater than zero, times this alpha vector. Okay, so one way to, to solve for what x is, is going to say it's equal to this infinite sum. <clears throat> and what that means is that this g is going to have to converge in terms of summing. Otherwise, the, you're going to get an expression which explodes and, and uh, the equilibrium is, is uh, not going to be well defined. Now, just in terms of understanding the, the equilibrium structure, we're getting a feedback here, right? So the more action my friends take, the more action I want to take and, and so forth. And so for that to work well, it has to be that these weights that I put on other people are small enough relative to the cost, the B, so that I don't want to take an infinite action. And so that's going to make sure that this thing has to converge, where remember this, these entries here are the relative weights compared to the Bs. And if those are small enough, then this thing will converge. If they get too big, then there won't be a nice solution. Now, another way to solve this is just to write this as x times i minus g um, is equal to alpha, or sorry, uh, i minus g times x is equal to alpha, and then that means that x is equal to alpha times i minus g inverse uh, down here. So I got this reversed, the alpha should be here. Um, so you could have x is equal to i minus g inverse um, times alpha if this thing's invertible. And this thing being invertible is the same condition that you need for this thing to converge. Okay? So we have a very nice solution. We can find x now directly as a function of the, the parameters of the game, the a and b's, and this g matrix, which is the w, i, j's, and the b's. So we have a very simple game. It ends up giving a nice solution where we can calculate the actions of every player as a function of the network structure and the, the payoff structure. Now, if A is equal to zero, then uh, we end up with a, a, you know, X equals GX, so then it's just a unit eigenvector, so then we end up with a, the, a solution which is just an eigenvector calculation. Okay, so what's nice about this model? The actions are related to the network structure, um, we get higher neighbor's actions, higher own action, higher own action, higher neighbor's action. So we get these feedbacks. So in order for a solution, we need uh, the B to be large enough and or the WIJs to be small enough so that this actually converges. But once it does, then there's a, a very nice prediction. And what's interesting is this relates back to our centrality measures. So let's have a look at this. So we've got our solution that uh, we can write X in either of these forms. Um, recall that Bonifacic centrality looked like a calculation which was very similar to this. It looked like counting paths of different length from i's to different j's and then summing over all possible path lengths um, according to some weight. That's exactly the calculation we're doing here. And alternatively, we wrote Bonifacic centrality looked like uh, an i minus g to the minus 1 times g um, times 1. And so if we uh, write um, Bonacic centrality in these manners, then we can rewrite the x's, right? So we've got the x's look like this, Bonacic centrality looks like this. <clears throat> so alternative representation of the x is that x is equal to 1 plus the Bonacic centrality times a over b. 
So in fact, what we can say is the action that any individual will take in one of these linear quadratic games of complementarities is um, something which is proportional to their Bonisic centrality. So higher Bonisic centrality, higher actions. Okay. So we've got everybody takes an action A over B to begin with, which is just sort of what they would do in isolation with no network. And then the extra network effect adds in these complementarities and how much extra action they get here depends on their Bonisic centrality in the network. Okay. So we get a natural feedback in complementarities. The actions relate to the total feedback. Centrality tells us relative number of weighted influences from one node to another. That captures the complementarities. And why is that working? So again, you know, these things we're measuring sort of how much do I get influence from other people, from, other, from their friends and so forth. That's exactly what's happening here. How much does their action influence their, my friend's actions, which then influences my action, and what do the feedbacks look like? Okay, so um, we've got this uh, nice solution. So the beauty of their model is that you end up with a very simple expression uh, for x. This scales with um, A over B, so this is uh, just multiplying everywhere, so we can just rescale and, and uh, eliminate that. Um, so uh, if we think about the Gij is equal to Wij over B, um, we, let, let's think of a simple world where uh, you're either connected to an individual or not. And then effectively, the main thing is you know, who you're connected to and, and what's the size of B and then that will give us a calculation and you can directly um, estimate these things. Um, so for instance, if we, if we do that calculation, you could do that calculation here uh, on, on one network um, the, uh, for which they did these, these calculations. You can do it in different settings. Um, so you know, depending on whether, what B is, if B is 10, that's sort of relatively high cost to taking actions, then what do you get? You get that, uh, a person in the center position takes an action of 1.75. This person takes an action of 1.88. This takes uh, 1.72. These people are all, right, this is going to be 1.72, um, 1.88, 1.88. So depending on how many neighbors you have and how central you are, um, in this case, the highest action ends up being for these individuals uh, in, in this position. Um, if you rescale the B and, and change the B to a different level, um, you get slightly different numbers. Um, basically, you know, here you can redo that for B equals 5. So if you lower the cost, people's actions go up. And it more than doubles. Um, and it's more than doubling because you're getting a feedback. So everybody wants to put in a higher action, but that means that their, their neighbors want to take higher actions, which then even increases their more. So if you hadn't been doing this uh, with the... Uh, with the neighbor feedback, you know, just taking the cost in half would have doubled the action. Now with the feedback, we, we get an extra effect. And indeed, um, for this particular example, you're still going to get, uh, you know, similar structure, but much higher actions. So what's nice about this model is it gives us predictions of exactly who's going to take which actions as a function of their position in the network. And now we've got something which begins to give us some feeling for why Bonisic centrality might be an interesting centrality measure. It's coming out and it's giving us some idea of what the feedback is in complementarities and in games of strategic complementarities um, that can be important. Okay, um, so that takes us through another game with uh, this kind of feedback. Now, uh, you know, the, the nice part about this is that it's, it allows one to do calculations uh, in terms of a simple network measure. Um, it's going to be more difficult if we want to add in a lot of heterogeneity among nodes and have different nodes have different preferences. Um, but we can enrich these models in, in ways that, that allow us then to take them to data. And indeed, people have been starting to work with these models and uh, starting to do analyses of, of what predicted behavior is, looks like as a function of the network and then actually seeing whether that uh, gives us some insight into what's happening in, in different settings.